In case you missed it, we just launched the Research and Engineering Studio on AWS. It's essentially a web portal for end users like researchers, scientists, product engineers to start using AWS without needing to understand the details of how to set up underlying cloud infrastructure, storage for compute, and virtual desktops. And no one has to reach for a bottle of whiskey every time somebody says CloudFormation template. Correct. They never have to know what an IM role is. And I think that would make everybody's life easier. <laughs> 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 oh, come on. They don't need to know IAM. I see REST as a self-service portal that will let scientists and engineers really very quickly and easily deploy and manage virtual desktops in the cloud loaded with the right applications that they need to use for their work. They'll be able to go straight into resources like virtual desktops with that that have been either provisioned for them or they can create them themselves. We're launching REST to squarely address one problem. How can we make sure that uh, scientists and engineers actually get to do what they want to do and what they're supposed to do without having to uh, spend time on things that they are not supposed to do, things that should have been set up for them. So this makes it easy for them to get started with their work. First and foremost, it's going to be useful for really two kind of personas. One, we have the administrators. They're the one that's actually going to set up res for their end users, researchers, scientists. And it's going to make it easier for them to have like a holistic view of managing virtual desktops for these researchers and scientists. They're going to be able to manage who has access to res. They're going to be able to manage virtual desktops for their end users, uh, which software stacks that the end users have access to. They're going to be able to define budgets. And it provides also like a holistic dashboard of view of like what exactly is going on, how many virtual desktops are spent, spun up, what are the budgets? Have they been exceeded? They are always worried about overuse of resources, uh, having control over resources. And in many cases, you know, they have to deal with uh, rogue AWS accounts or rogue cloud accounts that these engineers and, and researchers go create because they cannot get what they want from on-premises infrastructure, right? And then for the, the end users, the researchers and the scientists, it makes it easier for them just to get to work. The end users, right, the product engineers, the scientists, researchers, they just want to come in and work. Essentially, you get a, a desktop in the cloud with the right applications loaded for you, right? Installed in it, but it is installed for you. All you need to do is click a browser tab, start what you want to do, and get doing it. Right? You don't need to set anything up. You clicked on a button, and it's opened up a completely like really usable entire desktop inside a browser tab. Exactly. And you can use an application. And, you know, for the folks watching at home, you know, this is using DCV, uh, the nice DCV streaming protocol um, that does some amazing tricks to make it feel like you are right there in the data center next to it without the cold air conditioning blowing up the leg of your pants. <laughs> They can also share virtual desktops with other users for collaborative work, whether it's they can share by view only or they can share in a more collaborative or ownership type of um, sharing permissions. They can select the profile, put an expiration date of when that sharing permission is going to end and hit save. This is the scene that an admin user will see. There's obviously a few more control areas that they've got access to. This is where things get really interesting because they can actually see the overall dashboard. They can, they can get information about all of the sessions that are actually configured and running on the system at the moment. They can manage the software stacks that they, that they make available to their users. They can fool around with permissions. They can debug down in the actual environment management. This is where we discuss projects, users, and groups. Everything in REST in terms of access to resources and uh, the budget that you have to spend are bound by projects. A user can be a member of multiple groups, and of course, groups can be members of multiple projects. There's, there's a lot of overlaps between all the Venn diagrams here. You define a project as, as a task or as, as an activity, and then you assign groups of people that are working on that. Right? So that's where the groups and the users come in. You can set the budget level and thresholds for that project. And as soon as you exceed that budget that is assigned to your project, you can no longer spin up any more resources on that project. So the end users like researchers and scientists, they don't need to even create an AWS account. They can just connect 
to res with their like existing corporate credentials. And res does this by connecting to their existing active directory service, whether it's on-prem or whether it's in the cloud. Administrators can create storage in multiple availability zones with EFS for like the Linux operating systems. And for Windows and Linux, they can use FSX NetApp on tap. And so they can either create these file systems actually through the res web portal, or if they have existing file systems that they had previously created in AWS, those will get discovered once they connect res to their existing AWS account. So the software stack is essentially just a slight spin on an army. It's like the hard disk taken out of your laptop. It's got the operating system on it. It's got the software that you've got installed on it. It's got all of your settings and stuff. It's kind of got all of that junk all buried in there. It's to be available to my users in this project uh, on the following different instance types, because you know I happen to know that the software in there will only work on these following different instance types. And these are the ones that make most sense to my users. There's another cool feature. You can actually install the right software you want, you know, the right applications that you want for a particular project and create a desktop and a session out of it. And then you can actually create a software stack out of your running session and use that to replicate on other desktop for other users. So you can easily replicate the same type of environment for everybody in a project, for example, if you want. And that becomes a custom stack for your project. And you can do that from an existing running session. As you can tell, we really think visualizing data and accessing visual tools on regular desktops powered by the cloud will boost productivity for everyone in the R&D food chain. And that's going to have a lot of great effects. You can find out more by reading our launch announcement over on the HPC blog channel. But for now, we'll leave you with some of our thoughts about how we see this evolving. Thanks for watching.